Hello, everyone. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome back to Weekly Meditations on the Book of Revelation. This is week 23. We are now entering into the final two glorious grace-filled chapters of this most misunderstood book of all of Scripture, Revelation filled with gospel given to us in, in a poetic and symbolic, using metaphors and images, drawing from the Old Testament, John of Patmos expresses to us the good news and gospel that the Lord has triumphed over evil and has welcomed us to be a part of it, to be part of God's great plans for the eternity of the cosmos. We have a role to play. And oh boy, is this playing out so wonderfully. And so let's uh, dig into this uh, final part of Revelation here these past couple weeks and, and explore where is that good news that we can hold on to. But before we do that, let's rest in the Lord. Whatever burdens you are carrying, the worries and concerns, the anxieties, the laments that you are lifting up, no matter where you are, know this, first and foremost, you are in the hands of the Lord and the Lord is holding on to you. And so through a moment of pausing, breathing, contemplating on the presence of God and using Psalm 46, verse 10, may we be engaging in what is always true. And so I invite you to repeat after me. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know. Be still. All right. Well, let's go ahead now and uh, and take a look here. We're going to take two two weeks to look at the twenty first chapter of Revelation, and so our reading today is uh, just uh, just eight verses. But oh, what verses they are! Listen to the gospel that is expressed here. Again, this is uh, the message translation, Eugene Peterson. It's a little bit different sounding than maybe you would be used to because the words here in this section are familiar, um, but, but listen to it and find the gospel. I saw heaven and earth new created, Gone the first heaven, gone the first earth, gone the sea. I saw holy Jerusalem, new created, descending resplendent out of heaven, as ready for God as a bride for her husband. I heard a voice thunder from the throne. Look, look, God has moved into the neighborhood, making his home with men and women. They're his people. He's their God. He'll wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death is gone for good. Tears, gone. Crying, gone. Pain, gone. All the first order of things, gone. The enthroned continued, look, I'm making everything new. Write it all down, each word dependable and accurate. And then he said, it's happened. I'm A to Z. I'm the beginning. I'm the conclusion from water of life. Well, I give freely to the thirsty. Conquerors inherit all this. I'll be God to them. They'll be sons and daughters to me. But for the rest, the feckless and faithless, degenerates and murderers, sex peddlers and sorcerers, idolaters and all liars, for them it's lake fire and brimstone second death. 
Well, let's go ahead and, and reflect on this. Years ago, I, I discovered, and I brought this up a few times, that what's most helpful for me in engaging in revelation and the beautiful and frightening and powerful images and symbols and things that are just flying everywhere in revelation is to think of it not in terms of a timeline, not in terms of an A goes to B, goes to C, goes to D, but instead a spiral, if you will, or even better, more like some sort of modern art that has splashes and plankton things flying at you in all directions, because that's, that's what's happening here. And actually, the, the great phrase, I'm, I'm A to Z, beginning and end, we, we're familiar with, I'm the Alpha and the Omega, is a great way to think of it. Um, because we're not at point F or at, uh, you know, age number 10 in some sort of timeline. Instead, we're a part of something that is eternal. And we are part of God's activity and work that has been going on forever, before there were human beings, going on before even Jesus was born. We're part of that great big picture. And that's something that is being described here. Jesus is the one who's on the throne. <laughs> you know, he is the one speaking. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the word of God. He is the wisdom of God. He is the son of God. And, and he is the one who invites us to be a part. And all that is wicked, all that is evil, is finally defeated. One of the great images, of course, symbols in Revelation is the use of, of the city of Babylon um, to describe the world or worldly pleasures, or worldly pr uh, priorities, worldly way of thinking, uh, get what you can when you can kind of way of thinking. Um, and, 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 and Babylon has fallen. We're talking about that. And Babylon seemed to have all kinds of various lives just when you thought Babylon was done, um, you know, which can be seen as Rome or it can be seen as bigger than Rome. Is anything that pulls us away from God that convinces us as the serpent convinced Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden that, you know, God can't be trusted. You're really on your own. All of that is defeated. And so that city is replaced by Jerusalem. And we shouldn't think of Babylon in terms literally as that, that, that place that, that had a significant role in the history of Israel, nor should we think of Jerusalem as you know, a certain number of square miles in modern day Israel either. But it speaks to the kingdom of God on earth. It is where God meets God's people. And I like the way Eugene Peterson puts it, you know, um, God has moved into the neighborhood. <laughs> Uh, in, in John chapter one, it's the word became flesh and lived among us. God is with us. And that eternal promise that I will be their God and you will be my people is fulfilled. Um, it is happening. It is there. And the good news here for us is that this is not simply something that we are waiting for. Um, it is a depiction also of something that is available right now. Death does not have the final say, even as we continue to mourn and lose those that we love. Um, crying and weeping and lament does not have the final say, even as we struggle and people suffer and we suffer in this life. Yeah, we do. And, and, and again, it is the point of the cross that God suffers with us as well, out of great love for us. God empties himself, does not exploit God's power in Christ, but instead meets us out of love right where we are. Why? So that this is fulfilled. He moves into our neighborhood so that we can move into his neighborhood. 
and the destiny of all this is that death will be no more. It's defeated. It's been defeated. It will be defeated. <laughs> it is past and it's future. Again, think of Jackson Pollock. Think of splashes of color. It's all over. We've heard this already in chapter seven. We've heard this already in terms of the, the, the Michael and the dragon and the dragon defeated and all that um, in chapter 12. You know, we've heard this and we're hearing it again in a magnificent way. Death will be no more. Weeping and crying and pain will be no more, even as it still is something we face today. Because the Lord has triumphed and through the blood of the lamb, we have eternal life. He's moved into our neighborhood so that we might be invited to thrive and live in his neighborhood. And one of the most difficult things, and maybe this is again, the great hope. It's the hope of the martyrs. It's the hope of us who continue to struggle in faith and we keep getting hounded from the right and from the left, from behind and before us. <laughs> the message of don't trust God, a message of, oh no, you're on your own. A message of it's up to you. No one else is going to do it for you. Even as we're surrounded by those lies, the day is going to come where that won't be anymore. And the allure of Babylon won't be there anymore. And the liars, you got the whole list there at the end of in, in, in verse 8 here of chapter 21 won't be there. And so this is a text that invites us to rest in the Lord. And, and please do that. Please take up. I, I hope if anything over these 23 weeks, and we got a few more weeks to go, you've learned not to be afraid of revelation, but then also not to be afraid of the ugliness the world keeps throwing at you and keeps throwing at us. Don't let it knock you down. Don't let it send you in despair. It is who God created us to be, to be eternal beings with God and to thrive in this life and the next life, to thrive for eternity and to have a place. And we shall reign forever and ever because we're with the Lord who reigns forever and ever. That is our destiny. And so let's... Uh, Lean on uh, uh, Julian of Norwich once again uh, to help us as we pray her prayer. In you, Father Almighty, we have preservation and our bliss. In you, Christ, we have our restoring and our saving. You are our mother, brother, and savior. In you, our Lord, the Holy Spirit is marvelous and plenteous grace. You are our clothing for love. You wrap us and embrace us. You are our maker, our lover, and our keeper. Teach us to believe that by your grace, all shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. Amen. Be at peace. Christ is with you. He's moved into the neighborhood after all. <laughs> Thanks be to God.